Well, this week we saw a major breakthrough in a case that has baffled detectives for 26 years. Investigators named a person of interest in the disappearance of Jacob Wetterling. A masked man abducted Jacob on October 22nd of 1989. He was with his brother and a friend on a road near his rural St. Joseph home. Some of their boys went down to Tom Thumb to pick up a movie, and on their way back, someone stopped them. We believe that they have one of the boys because the, one of the boys did not come back with them. Here's a look at the suspect's sketch released shortly after the abduction. Next to it are the mugshots of the person of interest, Danny Heinrich, in 1990, and the mugshot from his arrest this week on unrelated child pornography charges. Investigators have old evidence in the Wetterling case that links Heinrich to the area where Jacob was last seen. So what else do prosecutors need to file federal charges in that case? I spoke with a former U.S. attorney. The disappearance of Jacob Wetterling 26 years ago has stayed with Minnesotans, and that's no different for former U.S. attorney Rachel Paulos. I think the message of this case is that law enforcement has never stopped seeking justice for Jacob. Newly released evidence shows the footprint investigators found at the scene of Jacob's abduction is a match to a sneaker seized from Danny Heinrich. And a tire print at the scene matched Heinrich's 1982 Ford EXP. But that's not enough to charge him with Jacob's abduction. You have to prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury. And those two pieces of evidence, first of all, clearly the government decided in its own judgment that that would not be sufficient to prove a crime. But secondly, we have this question of federal jurisdiction. Paulos explains to charge federally, a state line must have been crossed during the commission of a crime. And so far, there are no allegations of that in the publicly filed documents. Simply put, prosecutors need more. The best evidence is always a defendant's own incriminating statement or physical evidence. Or she says if a witness comes forward with something Heinrich allegedly said or did that would incriminate him. Even if the government does not have sufficient evidence to convict, they seem to be painting a picture of evidence to connect Mr. Heinrich to Jacob Waterling's abduction. Heinrich has denied and continues to deny his involvement in Jacob's abduction. Authorities stress he has not been charged in that case. And something else to note, Heinrich currently faces up to 70 years in prison if he's found guilty on each of the child pornography charges against him.